All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, the Kodash. I want to say double honor to the apostles and the bishop elders at Great Millstone for teaching his word in truth and sincerity and for ruling well. And a salutation to my fellow Akim across the four corners of the globe, preaching and prophesying in the name of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Hey, I'm the brother Gavar Yahweh, Duff, and GMS Hawaii. Coming to see you with a quick lesson. You know, um, this lesson was inspired by this video that I'm about to play in front of you, okay? Um, and um, a, a number of other things, and Lord willing, I'm going to try to speak about them on the line out there today. But um, one thing I was thinking about meditating on for the last couple of days was how everything that our people have done has always been tried, has always been co-opted to these other nations. You know, you talk about salvation, you talk about um, the, the blessings and the gifts that Yahweh Bashar has bestowed upon his people, which are us, the Israelites, these other nations always wanted a part of that, especially when it was good. But when things was bad, these these people didn't want nothing to do with us. Okay? And then they tried to, when they co-opted, when they co-opted us or our blessings or anything that has to do with us, you know, they turn it unto themselves. And when they do that, they leave us out. We end up being out on a cold. You know, and our people, you believe that us living in America, that these different things that transpire, like the Civil Rights Movement, the Voting Acts, especially when it comes to the so-called Negro, because they act like they forget about the so-called Native Americans, man. Okay? But they even do that to cause strife, man. They'll use these different types of verbiage. But it all means the same thing, the oppression of the children of Israel. And that's, that's the point. While they co-opt our struggle, they still oppress us and they leave us out in the cold. And so this video right here that you see in front of you, this woman, she speaks about how um, the so-called uh, white power structure remains intact. And then I have an example of the so-called uh, uh, white structure and how it benefits them. And even I did a lesson a couple of days ago on, on Hunter Biden and about how he he's not under the same subjection subjection that a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American man would be under if they'd have done those things that Hunter Biden has done. But again, this system is set up to benefit the Edomite. And this, and I have brought this out in that video, but I didn't bring this, the precept out. Let me bring this out real quick. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Okay. Let's see what comes up. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter 17, verse 15, it says, Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee which is not thy brother. All right? Let me just look at this in the, in the different Bibles. In the NLT, it says, If it happens, be sure to select a king, the man of the Lord, Yahweh Bashar Shah, your God chooses. You must appoint a fellow Israelite. He may not be a foreigner, right? And the, and the reason why the Lord established that we are to uh, elect a fellow Israelite is because a fellow Israelite is going to have your our best interest at hand, which is the nation. When you got these other nations over us, whether you appoint them as a king, whether you appoint them as some type of leader, or pseudo leader, and now what Esau does, and he's been doing, he sets up these fake black leaders. You got the veneer of a of a so called black man or woman as your leader, but they, those people have the interest of the of the ruling elite, the ruling class, the Edomites. They don't have the interest of the Israelites. And what those people do is that they benefit from you know looking like a leader of our own people, but they benefit also by getting Esau's goodies. And not giving you nothing and not doing anything for you. So you get these empty gifts like Juneteenth. Here it is, we in the middle of what they call Pride Month, which is a is a is a, a month of sexual debauchery being given more precedence than you so-called Negroes uh in this month. And they they just shove uh Juneteenth in the middle of that, June nineteenth. They put that in there. And it's empty, just like uh Black History Month is empty. These other nations don't even reverence that shit. They don't care about that. They reverence uh, uh, Pride Month way more than they do 
the uh, the achievements and the uh, the achievements and the um, so-called freedom of the so-called Negro here in America. All right. So that's a that's another example of co-opting, because what happened after the civil rights movement, um, these other nations. I'm sorry, Slocky. What happened at the civil rights movement? They pushed that sexual revolution was happening. Then now you got all the gay rights took precedence over your over your needs. Even I don't like that dude like that, but Dr. Umar Johnson said the same thing. He said you become uh you used to be the the number one minority in America. Now you're the number two. Really, you're not you're not you're not, you're not even that. You know why? Because these people that you vote for, going back to uh, Deuteronomy. Uh, 17 and 15 are, are all Edomites and they all work on the same coin. They just two sides of the different of the same coin. So they they these whether they Republican, whether they um, Democrat, they work together and they 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 on the same type time. So they, they're never going to have your best interest, you know. And so, again, when you choose a king, you're supposed to choose one as a, a fellow Israelite, not a foreigner, not a heathen. Okay, these other nations, they're not our brothers. They'll tell you that, oh, we're all one people. We're all under the same umbrella and we all live together, but we don't all suffer together. We all are not oppressed, you know? And that's a, that's horse shit, you know? This is the book of uh, Second Edges, chapter 6, verse 54. It says, after these, Adam also whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. So yeah, we all come out of Adam, but we ain't all one. Because not all the people were chosen. When you read in the second address, um, I think it's chapter five, it tells you out of all the multitude of the people, the Lord chose one people. And unto that people he gave what? A law. Alright? And that people were the Israelites, which is us. Alright? So we're not all the same. You know? Yeah, we all live on the same planet. But we're not the same. We're we're different, and you can tell that through our spirit, you know, beyond our creativity levels and athleticism and intellectual prowess, we're just different than you other nations, man. Right? Because the Lord made us that way. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sake. Right? See, the, the the Edomites will have you believe that the world was made for their sake. It was made for their benefit. And as it currently stands, because they're in a leadership position, what we call the managerial position, because the Lord gave the earth unto the wicked, right? They believe that the earth was made for their sake. It was made for, when they say this universal thing, oh, it was made for all people. No, the earth wasn't made for all people to, to, to live and do whatever they want on it. The earth was made for the sake of the Israelites, for us to rule on this earth in righteousness and, and rule over our subjects, which are you other nations, you heathens, all right? It says, uh, verse 56, as for the other people, which also come of Adam, all these different nations, thou hast said that they are nothing. And you can read about that in Isaiah 45 and 17 on down. It said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. So he likened these other nations unto spit. It has likened the abundance of them, just because it's new, they're numerous, he has, a, a, as a drop that falls from a vessel, man. So their numbers don't matter. You know, the quantity of people that they have on this planet, they don't, they're not, it's not important. You know? It's not. And But this is how they treat us. They treat us, the Israelites, as we're not important. And this system that we live in is set up to benefit them. All these different uh, causes that they push, whether it be the so-called color, the uh, integration, Integration was set up to benefit the so-called white men. They wanted to do away with segregation as regards to the Jake because they didn't want us to uh, thrive in numbers in alone. So they said, "Nah, we gonna cut that out. We gonna make them. We gonna make them a hundred and percent totally uh, um, dependent on us, the Edomite system, so that they can further oppress you." That's and that's what it's all about. So let me play this real quick. how this is not Jim Crow. During, During Jim, Jim Crow, Crow you, you had explicit laws that were intentionally designed to language black people as non-human, less than human. Salaki, Salaki, I just want to try to mute my microphone. Uh, 
Salaki, I just want to mute my microphone. Um, I want to try to mute my microphone so I can play this because normally when I play this, it's an echo. So just bear with me, brother. I'm just trying to figure it out. Right, just trying to figure it out. It might not do it. It might not mute the... So I played anyway. Slocky about the uh the echo. I played anyway. Let me play this again. Turn it down just a little. I'm gonna play it. So let, so let me, me give you a clear example of how this is not Jim Crow. During Jim Crow, you had explicit laws that were intentionally designed to language black people as non-human, less than human, less valuable, less important structurally, and not able to access citizenship and any equal rights. It was very clear, it was very explicit. But that was a mechanism for something bigger. And this is where the continuity remains. That was a mechanism for what would then have been called white power or white supremacy in that context, which is the control of resources, the control of space, and the creation of a social world based on race and racial privilege. So the question is, well, how do you get to that kind of outcome after the civil rights movement? You want to create that outcome? You can't create laws that say black people can't vote, black people can't have the same resources in school, black people can't fill in the blank. You create structural racism, a language of race-neutral language, a laws that produce economically almost the same effects socially very similar effects. Yes, we have a larger middle class, I can hear Glenn. Yes, we have a larger middle class, but we have a much more isolated, controlled, and desperate black working class and poor that is not just the product of poverty, but the product of structural racism in relationship to the evisceration of resources in black communities. So it's not just poverty in the abstract. It's why you see very different formations of community among black poor and other groups of people who are poor. So structural racism, for those who don't follow this field at all, um, the very simple definition is the normalized, that's very important, it's not exceptional, normalized, and legitimized range of policies, practices, and attitudes. So it's belief, policy, and practices that routinely, not exceptionally, produce cumulative and chronic adverse outcomes for people of color, especially black people, and it's the main driver of racial inequality and racial discrimination in America today. So let me give you a clear example. Yeah, so they created a system that benefits Esau Edom, all right, and that further oppresses us, even though they changed the language, it's still the same. The whole system is still the same. It's not set up to benefit the Israelites at all. You know, it's not set up to give us uh, help at all. And those few that do get a little bit of something, it ain't really nothing that that's going to make change for the entire people, man. And every four years, you get our people marching down to these voting offices, whether you black, Latino, or Native American, thinking that something's going to change for you. <clears throat> but the system is always set up to benefit the bigger ones. That's why there's a term... I forget, Apostle Gabar uses it, but I know there's like, it's, I'm not sure if it's Greek or Latin, but it says it's about who benefits, man. Because at the end of the day, who really benefits from this system? Is it is it the Israelites or is it the heathen? Is it the Edomite? This is Psalms chapter 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. So he used these different words, these different languages. It sound good when they say people of color, when they say uh, a universal help and universal love and all, all of those just words to basically cover up what they really do which is destroying you so the words of his mouth were smoother than butter but war was in his heart and it's, he's always in his mind he's, the, he's he's going to war with jake man esau edom is going to war with jake they show you that visceral hatred and you still got places like in america uh uh um, sundown towns which i watched a video from elder i not earlier today about sundown towns GMS ISAW, I think it's ISAW 144, you know? And they were talking about the, uh, you know, these in 2023, you still got places where if the sun go down and you a so-called black man, you might want to get the hell up out of there or you're going to die. Or they're going to put you in prison. They're going to, you know, put some drugs on you, put a murder on you, and destroy your life, man. All because of what you look like, you know? So the hate is still there. Even though it's a thin veneer of, love and 
acceptance and all this other shit. And it's only acceptance when you're doing something that Esau accepts, right? It says, uh, it says the words of his mouth were smoother than butter, butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords, right? His words were softer than oil, but they were drawn swords in the end, you know? They were, those words were meant to cut you and to destroy you. It says his word in the NLT, his words are smooth as butter, but his, and his heart is war and his mind is war. His words are soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers, right? Man, everything's going to be okay. We're going to do this for you. But they just do a bunch of empty rhetoric and empty help while benefiting the Edomite. Let's play this real quick. Because there is no racial equality in America. This, that's what this video showed you. Okay? And that's what this video will show you. That's why these Edomites don't want what you call CRT being pushed, which is critical race theory. Okay? What is CRT? I, mean, I don't know. I want to go back to this because it had it right there. Well, it's about there. Yeah, what is CRT? CRT, a framework of analysis grounded in critical theory, which this devil don't want you thinking critical. Originated in the mid-1970s in the writings of several American legal legal scholars, including Derek Bell, Alan Freeman, Kimberly Crenshaw, right? It says critical race theory is a cross-disciplinary examination by social and civil rights scholars and activists of, of how laws, social and political movements, and media shape, shape are shaped by social conception of race and ethnicity man you know so it's basically like like this woman said it's a system a structure that's set up on race man why they don't talk about race overtly you don't hear the words negro you don't hear the word colored you don't hear the word white too often in these different languages they switch it up but the system is set up to benefit one people See, in the kingdom of heaven, our system is going to be set up ultimately to benefit the Israelites. Starting with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, King David, the elect, the, the 144,000 or the 12, starting with the 12 apostles and, and whatnot. But the system is, is ultimately is going to benefit. Everybody's going to be able to benefit, but it's just certain levels of benefit. That's why Esau has the world today. It benefits him first, and then it will benefit the heathen, and then you jakes, us jakes, we're last. You know, unless you sell out, then you'll get a little taste, you know. But yeah, outside of that, it's really set up to benefit one people. People go to work every day to benefit the system, which is what? The system of so-called white supremacy or white power, which this devil not even white. It's really Edomite supremacy and Edomite power, okay? And here's another example. I hate that um, I can't mute my microphone. Every time I try to mute it, I'm having problems. Let me see. I want to try to mute my microphone. I'm... It's okay. Let me play this. The 50 year old Texas real estate agent who flew to the Capitol. Guess what? I'm going to be there. Meet Jenna Ryan. Ryan. She's, She's the 50 year old Texas real estate agent who flew to the Capitol riot on a private jet. They go down and storm the Capitol. They're down there right now, and that's why we came. The evidence of her criminal intent seems clear. We're all going to be up here. We're going to be breaking those windows. Just outside the Capitol. Go in here. Life or death. It doesn't matter. Here we go. Ryan has been charged with four felonies, but she recently insisted on social media, quote, definitely not going to jail. Sorry. I have blonde hair, white skin, a great job and a great future, and I'm not going to jail. You see, in Jenna Ryan's world, jail is for black people. Jail is for people who knock on doors while black. Are you serious? No, you are not. Represent. That's right. An elected African-American lawmaker in Georgia who knocks on the governor's door gets arrested immediately. Something that our governor is doing? You know who did not get arrested immediately? <laughs> These violent white insurrections. See, when you attack police... This is white privilege. When you are peaceful but black, this is often the reality. White privilege, though, goes even further. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. You see, it's not just ignorant insurrectionists who believe they deserve special treatment. 
Recently, Tennessee Republican Senator Marshall Blackburn was in a car speeding away from the U.S. Capitol. Capitol Police pulled the vehicle over. Blackburn then stepped out on her own, approached the police, announced she was a senator, showed her pin, and said she was trying to catch a flight. The police let her go with no warning to her or her driver. The police didn't even file a report. Would any African American, even a black member of Congress, get that same treatment? Most white people grow up thinking police officers are a source of safety. Too many black and brown people are not safe with the police, not even if you're a child, as Tamir Rice taught us. Not if you're seeking medical help, as Jonathan Farrell taught us. Not if your back is turned, as Walter Scott taught us. Not if you tell police you can't breathe, as Eric Garner taught us. Not if you have your hands up, as Michael Brown taught us. Not if you are safe in custody, as Freddie Gray taught us. Just five years ago, the data shows that more unarmed black people were killed by police than were lynched in any year since 1923. And by the way, white privilege, of course, is not just about interactions with police. How about educational opportunities? Concentrated poverty directly correlates with lower quality public schools. Studies have found that if you are black and poor, you are 19 times more likely to live in concentrated poverty than if you're poor and white. How about our media? Google beauty and face. This is what shows up on my screen. There is one person of color out of 16. Even if our media is not intentionally biased, it covers a biased country. For example, most of our leaders describe the epidemic of heroin used overwhelmingly by white people as a health problem. When black people use drugs, we're told it's a crime problem. You get the point. Our society and our institutions are inherently racist. With the four felonies. Yeah, exactly. She recently insisted on social media, quote, definitely not. Go yeah, you know, she said definitely not going to jail. Sorry, I have blonde hair, white skin, a great job and a great future. And she'll get the more lenient. She'll get the more lenient uh, uh, judgment uh, than, than Jake. And all these people agree. You know. And they might make an example of her, but if she got enough connections, if she's up high enough, they'll sweep it under the rug. It's a lot going on this week that they swept under the rug. You had the Hunter Biden case situation. You had other things going on within uh, the political sphere. You know, we had different laws being passed while people were looking for some people in an imaginary submarine, you know, in a yellow school bus, you know, an underwater yellow school bus. People are looking for these people, but it was real things happening and going on, man. And Jake is none the wiser. You know, it says right here, um, um, refuse. Jake is none the wiser. You know, this is uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 50. I'm sorry. Jeremiah. I think it's 15 and 33. Jeremiah, and I got to go to Kent, Slovakia. Jeremiah 50 and 33. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. You know? And they these nations, especially the nation of Edom, they continuously oppress us, man. They refuse to let us go, man. And we're oppressed in this place, man. You know? We're oppressed. You know, you hear a lot of Judah's uh, oppression because we're the top tribe, we're the head tribe, we're the tents of Judah. So what? Rise first, stand first. But then all the other tribes, eventually they're going to wake up and come to the understanding that, look, man, we're being oppressed by the same devil, man. And this same devil is oppressing us, man. And something's got to be done about this. And Yahweh Shai is coming back. And he's going to do the, he's going to do the do, you know. And in the kingdom of heaven, the role's going to be reversed. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. We're the last in this society. Esau, you're the first in this society. So in our society, we're going to be first. And you're going to be the tell. You're going to be last. And then following those other nations, man. Some other nations are going to be oppressed, but not on the level of the Edomite, you know. And it's all retribution. It's all payback. Righteous retribution. Righteous payback, man. Because these, these devils don't fear. They don't fear the judicial system the way we do. They don't fear uh, this oppressive system the way we do. And then it's, we oppress on levels. It's not just what Esau is doing. He'll put women's needs above the men's needs. Above the children's needs. Uh, children's needs above the uh, women's needs. You know? 
but we still live in a system that's socially structured to benefit one particular people, and that's the Edomites, and they know it. It's our people that's simple, stupefied, that believe that, you know, everybody has an equal chance. We got an equal playing field, and that's not true. That's not true at all. Just because you see one or two of our people get to a certain point don't mean that it's like that for everybody. Because the vast majority of us are, uh, are, are oppressed, man, by the system. And even Jake that sell out, they're oppressed too. Them niggas can't do much. They can't say nothing. They can't stand up for their people. They can't open their mouth about nothing unless they handle us telling them they can. So how free are they? You know? And so Devin said, I hope you were edified. Devin said, Shalom, on to the next.